Stewart. I think John Stewart is very talented. Me too. I think he's very funny. Yeah. I think when he's in uh, the room, he's usually the sharpest guy in the room, just to be clear. And I've said that many times, even though I disagree with him politically. But yesterday, this segment was uploaded right here on YouTube. And for some reason, it keeps these things keep being featured in my feed. <laughs> They're doing it on purpose. <laughs> um, and it's a segment called The Human Cost of Climate Change. Now, I want to go through this piece by piece because every single thing they say is wrong. And he's sitting down with, uh, I would imagine, supremely unqualified writers or producers. You'll yes. see in a second. Who They haven't really even made it through debate 101. Honestly, these people would be ill-equipped to sit down at a change my mind table. Every point that they bring up and they think is insightful – is the first point that someone would bring up on a debate about climate change before it's shut down and they get to the secondary points that are more effective. However, this is being peddled to people who don't really pay attention. The left requires that you not only be uninformed, but typically that you be misinformed, as yeah. you will see here in the segment. Let's go to their first claim that they make, which by the way, put this in your memory bank, because their final point completely contradicts this point. So here we go. It's generally not the wealthy folks who are, it's people who are living in communities Whenever that- Whenever something's on the pressure, the people with the least yeah. resources- There's a big discrepancy between who suffers and who causes the suffering. It's always been the right. case in the world. There are haves, and then there's a giant swath of have-nots. And for some reason, this one now, we're all like, I'm really concerned about them, but like- I mean, what's different now is that climate change is here for a lot of people who are currently suffering, but, but we all care about it because they know it's coming for them. It'll eventually come for the rich person. Yeah, it'll eventually come <laughs> he looks worried. for the rich person. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, because it's the rich people who are going to have to deal with gas prices and inflation yeah. with their electric vehicles, which you've encouraged people to go out and buy, uh, by the way, which also has resulted in an increase in prices, which you then bitch about because you had to kick Elon Musk out of <laughs> California. Well, he had to leave California, but effectively he was well, right. He was forced to leave because of your green policies. Oh, green policies can't coexist with Tesla. Also, when you hold a climate summit in Cancun, you can well, tell you really value it. <laughs> yes, you very much care about people. Yeah, come on down. We're going to drink giant margaritas. Right. <laughs> well, who does she in think the yard. rich people are? John Kerry? No, this country. AOC? Everything that she's doing is making a decision from the perspective of a rich person who can afford not And what's ironic this. is she goes to she goes to John Stewart and says, well, Rich, I'm yeah. looking at you. He's like, oh, I am a rich person. You are all rich yeah. people if you understand the concept of wealth globally. So let me give right. you kind of- 30 grand and up. Yeah. The US, uh, is it uh, GDP per capita? I think is the number that we have. Mm -hmm. GDP per capita is $63,000. Okay. Gas is currently $1.2 a liter. And I'm using this so that we can compare Comparison. liters to liters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zimbabwe, GDP per capita is $1,200. That's less than $63,000. Definitely less. Gas prices there are 2.1 liters. So uh, $2.1 per liter. That's, that's so, insane. So do the math. Do the math there. What do you think happens to someone who is making, let's say, $1,000, $2,000 a year when gas prices go up to seven, eight, nine dollars a gallon. So here's something else too. If, if enacted, the so Paris Climate quick. Accord would not only, we'll go back to global, but here it, yeah. it, would have, it would hurt average Americans, not the policymakers. So there'd be 400,000 job losses. Oh, gee. $20,000 lost on average to a family of four. All references available at ladderwithcrowder.com. Uh, $2.5 trillion in aggregate GDP loss. You'd see a 13 to 20 something percent increase in electricity costs. And by the way, as energy costs increase, the risk of deaths increase across the board. In the 2000s, yeah. we saw decreases in energy prices. Uh, they saved 11,000 lives per year. Yeah, and those were just actually, I think, winter deaths. Like you said, it, the cold is actually a much bigger problem than it is in, right. in summer months. But 11,000 a year, that's that's real this is a people very common not dying. <laughs> this is a very common argument that they want to make. They talk about climate justice. Go speak with a black person in inner city Detroit. Tell them that your number one goal on the agenda is climate justice. And they won't know what you're talking about. They'll look at you like you have lobsters crawling out of your ears. And then when you tell them that in order to uh, basically establish some new form of climate justice, I don't know, like a five-page bill. To, you yeah. Know, when you're talking about AOC's, detailed. Yeah. AOC's bill. What was that bill called again? The, the Green New Deal. Yeah, the Green, yeah, the New, Green deal. New Deal. Yeah. That's, what it, was, That's yeah. what it was called. That's right. I just forgot about it. because That I took was, up the first page. I had, yeah, letters. I had memorized. They used a very large <laughs> font. And also, AOC, don't go with Courier New. Triple spaced. One with Comic Sans. <laughs> 
also been an inner city Detroit that, by the way, in order to uh, to enact climate justice, uh, gas prices and your your energy prices, your monthly bills are going to have to go up by 20 percent. W- watch them. See how long it takes before you wake up from your ass kicking. <laughs> Let's go to their next point, which also makes no sense and flies in the face of reality. The thing you said that I find interesting is fossil fuels. Those companies, we can't just view them as the enemy in this crisis. They are not just the villain. They make it, but we use it. Like, they wouldn't make it if we didn't use it. And if we didn't need to use it, like... But they could make other stuff that we would just as easily use. Really? They own the present. And I don't think you can get them to give up their piece of the present unless you cut them in on the future. Okay, so a couple of points. So they say they could make other... They could create other forms of energy that we could use. And then he talks about we need to cut them on a, on a piece of the deal, right? The haves, the have-nots. Okay, let's address the first part. Since you're an energy expert, uh, like what, <laughs> sweetheart? I hear this argument a lot, like, oh, well, these fossil fuel companies, they could just yeah. create another form of energy. Well, it's like telling Pepsi, oh, well, they could make uh, chipsets for smartphones. Yeah, but that's not what they do. Yeah. Well, that's not what they do. And who are you to tell them what they should do or what they are required to do? I know you want to enforce that through the government with me- by men with guns while also robbing us of our basic right to own firearms. But like what? Like what? Wind? Solar? Is this what you're talking about? Fossil fuel companies could go to wind or solar? Well, it, 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 it doesn't work. We have this. This is uh, We've already had the Petri dish. Germany, we've used this example before, and unfortunately now France is actually transitioning to renewables. Why? No. Because of international governing bodies that tell them that they should move away from nuclear, not because it's better for the environment. So Germany, 55 point something percent of their energy came from renewables. The references are available uh, on the website. What do they have? What were the results? More carbon emissions. Mm. They had brownouts. That's where they would have to sell their energy. At a loss, I believe. Their surplus is at a loss. So they'd have periods where they would have no energy, and yeah. then they have too much energy because the battery technology isn't there. The storage capacity isn't there. Now, France's energy for a long time, and this is going to be decreasing, was 76% nuclear. Yeah. They produced one-tenth of the carbon emissions that Germany did for half the price. <laughs> for half the price. Some would say that's a good thing. Yes. It's yes. better. So less waste, and it's cheaper. Well, her suggestion is invent a whole new way to have energy, though. No, 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 no. That was the head writer, Dave, who said they could make other things that we could use just as easily. Right. I'm quoting the head writer. Correct. Because that's what it said below her. And I'm like, list them, and that's not true. Now, they move on to greedy companies, right? These greedy companies who aren't going to give up this power, right? We need to cut them in on a piece of the future. This is also something that people don't understand. Um, it, it's similar to when people say big pharma doesn't want you to know about like vitamins, supplements, and nutrition. Well, there's some truth to that, but if you also look at some of the biggest supplement companies uh, in the world, some of them are, are basically co-owned by big pharmaceutical companies. They stand yeah. to make the most money some of the time. So let's look at some of these companies. BlackRock, right? BlackRock, who, they have huge stakes in energy companies. And you also look at the relationships that companies like BlackRock, again, too big to fail, uh, and what kind of relationship they have with energy companies. BlackRock is punishing companies over climate and action. One of the ah. biggest companies in the history of mankind. They're punishing people over climate and action. But to go back to the point about uh, how climate change hurts the most vulnerable among us, right? Hurts the poorest among us because that's what they need to push their social agenda right, of right, the Green right, New right. Deal and climate justice. Well, okay. What about this? BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink, this wasn't that long ago was basically saying, you know what, we're going to have to have a few years of discomfort uh, in order to transition away from fossil fuels. So big, greedy company who you're saying, hey, we need to cut them in on the future like you have some kind of a crystal, like, like, like you really understand the art of the deal after just saying that these energy companies can just, I don't know, create new forms of energy. Uh, you fail to see the connection that these are the people who have the largest vested interest in punishing companies as part of this global social agenda. Here's Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock himself. Don't take my word for it. We are going to find new supplies of oil elsewhere. Maybe OPEC will begin to raise right. their production. The U.S. will re-begin to invest again back into our, our, in our energy fields. Right. Biden? Uh, high energy prices is going to accelerate decarbonization. People, more and more people say, I can't afford gas. I'm going to buy an EV. So we're going to see behavior changes. And over the time, the next three or four years, we are going to see less dependencies, which is really good for the world. We're going to have a, a better thing. mix of He's energy between hydrocarbons and renewables. And so it's about a two to three year possible uncertainty. But I actually love where we're going. Oh, <laughs> but it's wonderful, because it's good for you. 
but in, but <laughs> just like the housing market, as you guys buy them all up. Is it 180? Is it People can't 10? afford no. gas. They're going to buy an EV. It's the dumbest sentence I've ever heard. I think it's going to be elevated heard. for a long time until we, we have these corrections. He loves the direction it's going. Keep in mind, that's the guy who's the CEO of the company who's bought up a large portion of housing here in the United States, largely, you know, single-income family-type yeah. housing, so that we, we can create a permanent class renters. of renters. Yep. Hmm. You won't be – the same guy – when you bitch about – well, and of course you want the government to come in and solve the problem, just like you want the government to come in and solve the problem of energy. And by the way, the government is the same entity that declared BlackRock too big to fail. You can thank Elizabeth Warren for that, or at least they want to. I don't know if that's officially been uh, passed yet, but that was a proposal. Uh, do you see the cozy relationship here? Hey, you can't afford a home. Why? BlackRock. Government's in bed with BlackRock. Hey, you can't afford gas. CEO of BlackRock says, that's a great thing. I love the direction we're going. Government's in bed with BlackRock. Do you see, again, you're talking about greedy companies. And I don't disagree. But that's not free market capitalism. That's not even crony capitalism. That's just bordering on socialism when you understand the relationship between BlackRock. Here they talk about, and you hear this all the time, that we subsidize fossil fuels more than... That's the reason that we haven't transitioned to right, green energy. Yeah. It's wrong, but hear it from them first. Greedy companies aren't going to make decisions based on morality. To that point, though, so it's like, even if you cut them in, yeah. I'm curious what cutting them in looks like in a perfect world, because we already subsidize them with very little right. regulation. Very so, little? <laughs> you know, they're already being given money. <laughs> but not yes. for renewables, right? I mean, less for Much, much, much less for renewables. And you uploaded that shit. <laughs> I can't believe he showed us who writes his show. Yeah. I can't believe that he showed us his head writer was a white person. I know. Oh, that's terrible. Cancelable. Couldn't oh, get thanks. Tom Brady on the payroll, huh? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. Come on. I see an empty Kaepernick seat by the writer's table. <laughs> yep. John Stewart. Somebody could take a knee There's right next to that table. one person of color, and she's not said a word thus far. <laughs> well, she did. She said two words, but they were wrong. Oh, that's true. So this is something they say. Oh, they receive... Well, first off, <laughs> subsidies through what? Through uh, relaxed regulation. Ah, very what? little regulation. Energy companies? I don't think you can find a more regulated industry no. in the industrialized world outside of maybe health insurance companies, maybe airlines. And by the way, these always rate very highly on the favorability scale, right? You guys love energy companies, health insurance companies, and airlines. Those are, those are the top three. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. On the tip sheet. Yeah. So this is factually incorrect. We give far, far more in subsidies to renewable energy uh, than fossil fuel companies. Let me give you some numbers really quick. In 2016, overall energy subsidies to the entire energy sector. Coal, $19 million directly, $1.2 billion overall. Natural gas, $111 million directly, negative $773 million overall because of the tax expenditures, which were $940 million. Whoops. Nuclear, $365 million overall. Renewables. It's ironic that they don't consider, they don't put nuclear really in that category, right? Um, yeah. Especially when you understand yeah. what you can also do with nuclear waste as well, and that off you know, that sort of what they use to cool it down. That heat can also be recycled as energy. Yeah. This is modern technology that, of course, because of regulations, we can't utilize. But 365 million to nuclear overall renewables, 909 million directly, 6.6 6 billion dollars overall. So they want you to believe that fossil fuel, natural gas, right? That they're receiving more in subsidies than renewables. Net negative 773 million versus a positive of 6.6 .6 billion. Hmm. It's not even close. It's even exacerbated by the fact that in 2016, we're talking about this very same year, renewables only generated 15% of total electricity created. The rest was fossil fuels, nuclear gas. And at what cost? Yeah. Right. So every time you get a, a you know an electric bill or a plan, they're like, "Hey, sign up for this green thing." And I'm like, "Oh, well, that's cool. What is it going to cost?" Well, about twenty five to thirty five percent more. <laughs> Here's the next comment that they make, which doesn't necessarily need to be rebutted, but I'm going to do it anyway, uh, because in order to try and make this case of well, riddled with now I don't even want to say riddled, exclusively based on factual inaccuracies, not so, exclusively, all the substantiation in this video is factually inaccurate. Every single claim that they make, and they're not, and that's really difficult to do because they're trying to evade making factual statements because you know, they don't necessarily want to be held accountable, which brings us to our next point. Uh, well, this is all the problem of uh, something, 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 corporations. Corporations are sociopaths. Right. So they're also not yeah. going to do better out of the good of their own hearts. Right. But you need accountability, Goodness. though. Goodness. How do you hold them accountable for 
if we cut them in, where does accountability live in that so space? So I think you have a political problem here mm -hmm. because because they control so much that is the engine of our economy. Same with the financial markets. They have politicians over a barrel. Interesting. Okay, so corporations are sociopaths. Now, far be it from me to disagree. And this is the issue that I've talked about in the past, where does your worldview require inconsistency? I believe, for example, that that CEO of BlackRock saying that he loves the direction of skyrocketing energy costs, I believe he might be a sociopath, at the very least selfish. I believe that power corrupts. I believe that can take place with powerful companies in the free market. But you know who else I think? often lean towards being a, being a sociopathic in, uh, in nature, career politicians. Mm. And to repeat your question, how do you hold them accountable when they can just write new laws so that they are never held accountable? If a career politician is a sociopath, you, can, you have no hope. There is nothing you can do because, they, well, you know, we'll just write a new law so that uh, that doesn't really matter. Kind of like when Nancy Pelosi, I don't know if you remember this, defended insider, insider trading. Martha Stewart was wearing an orange jumpsuit <laughs> Yes, <laughs> for doing what Nancy Pelosi here flagrantly defends. Just sign a new law that defends it. Madam Speaker, uh, Insider just completed a five-month investigation finding okay. that 49 members of Congress and 182 senior congressional staffers have violated the Stock Act, um, the Insider Trading Law. I'm wondering if you have any reaction to that. And secondly, should members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks. The answer is Congress. yes. Just say no, yes. Say no yes. to the second one. <laughs> um, Wrong. Any, uh, we have a responsibility to report in the stock, uh, on the stock, but I don't, I'm not familiar with that five month review, but if uh, people aren't reporting, they should be. You're very familiar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, this is a free market and people, oh, we are free market. The free economy, market. They should be able to participate in that. Now you love the free market, Miss. We have to pass the bill to know what's in it. I, I, I'm a little confused. It's a, it's only a free market if everybody's playing kind of with the same roughly because it's impossible to the same information. You're you're literally going, yeah, we're going to approve this one. So go buy that stock today because we're going to approve that tomorrow in committee and that'll get out and that that's going to make them millions of dollars. And so that's fair. Yeah, for people who don't understand what this because people often throw out the talking point insider trading laws with people uh, who are you know in elected office. Let me break it down for you really quickly. It's illegal, for example, if you were in the private sector for someone to give you a tip saying, hey, I work over here at Pepsi uh, right. and company and we're going to or Coke. And they say, hey, by the way, we're going to be releasing new Coke tomorrow. So you might want to invest in it, which, by the way. Don't get tips from a guy who works at New Coke. Ford Etzel people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Waiting to get paid right? out. That's illegal if you invest, you make a bunch of money. However, it's not illegal for Nancy Pelosi to say, oh, you know what? We're actually going to approve this bill that allows these yeah. solar panels in, uh, I don't know, the Mojave Desert. Oh, and by the way, we're going to give a no-bid contract to this company to make those panels and let me invest in uh, some stock yeah. for said company. Now it's estimated that Pelosi herself owns about $46 million in stocks. And guess what her husband does? He runs a venture capital fund. Ah. How convenient. You do that? Weird. And they would have you in they would have you in solitary confinement with lines on the wall like Zorro. Yeah. The first point was it's not going to affect, you know, the rich. Eventually it'll come for the rich, but right now it affects the poorest among us. That's we have to act on climate change now so that we help the impoverished and the underprivileged. That was their first point. Well, now they end it with actually we're gonna have to destroy their lives because something, something, something justice. One of you know, the conversations around climate change is that we have to have a just transition that people, you know, coal mining jobs are actually good paying jobs. We hear that a lot. Progress has n is never fair mm -hmm. yeah. and almost never just. <laughs> and I still, I, I think I, my view of the world is more like, how can we give the soft landings to the inevitable destruction that is ancillary to our progress. And there it is. Your jobs, your livelihoods are ancillary to our progress. See what, now keep in mind, they said ancillary, which means uh, insignificant, right? Separated from, to our progress. Is there any more elitist phrase that you've ever heard on a program? There are uh, jobs and livelihoods, which will be painful, but ancillary to our progress, meaning the progress of people like John Stewart and those head writers, the people in California, the elites in New York's, uh, in the New Yorks of the world, the Californias of the world, and your livelihood is ancillary. You know what else is? Well, the cost of, of gas. Let's, what's under ancillary? Let's look at that. The cost of gas. 
the cost of all energy, the cost to heat your homes, your jobs, right? If you're working in any kind of an energy sector that isn't renewable, hey, you know what else is ancillary? Because we want to cut them in a piece of the future, places like BlackRock, your ability to own a home. So right now, we have a bunch of privileged, wealthy people game planning the entire economy under the guise of climate justice while considering your livelihood and everything they're in to be ancillary. There's no conspiracy. That, my friends, is the Great Reset. That's the Great Reset. That's what it is. That's why BlackRock CEO loves the direction we're going with the, 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 the pain, the discomfort of energy costs. He's not affected. Nor is John Stewart. We know Stephen Colbert isn't affected. He would pay $15 a gallon. You're just ancillary to that room, to those boards, and those sociopaths in government. You don't need a conspiracy. That's the Great Reset. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.